Hey guys, this is IX Roll at IX with Rollout Reviews doing another Let's Build. This time it is the Bionicle Villain Pack. This was a promotional poly bag very similar to the Hero Pack from last year. In fact, I think this was supposed to be released last year to coincide with the summer 2015 wave. However, it never made it stateside. The only place that I know it was widely available in was Russia, and I bought this from a Bricklink seller in Hungary, so I have no idea how the distribution went. It's kind of a mystery, but all I know is that we never got it over here. If you live in the States and want to get one of these, you're probably going to have to look towards Bricklink. I got these for about six or seven bucks a piece, which seems a little bit spendy considering these were given away for free. But I digress. Let's see if it's worth it. Now, I got several of these. I got five of them. I have three here, and I plan on opening three or four, and I'll talk about that here in just a bit. But uh, yeah, as you can see, it comes with a pedestal. That is the most exciting part for me. I've seen a lot of fan-made brick-built pedestals for uh, legendary masks. I've also seen at least a handful of uh, custom Shapeways pedestals that replicate the pedestals they had on display last year at uh, New York Comic Con, or in 2014 New York Comic Con, I think, um, which look really, really good. They're fairly expensive, however. Something I really like about this is that it's an officially released product by LEGO, and there's something about the officiality that I like, even though it's only made out of cardboard and might not be quite as good. It also comes with this uh, hexagonal poster, or um yeah, hexagonal. That's that's what that is, because there's six masks. Um, and uh, I don't know if it comes with anything else. The Hero Pack, of course, had a poster and some stickers. And I do want to ramble a little bit about that poster, because I don't think I've ever talked about my frustration with that. Because, uh, well, after I did the uh, Hero Pack Let's Build, I, I never really talked about it ever again. So at the end of this video, I do want to ramble a bit about that. But... Let's focus on this first. It has the massive creation up here. That's the first clue. It's supposed to be, uh, you know, for the 2015 line because it doesn't have the, the mask of control or anything, even though it does have kind of a green aura on the pedestal itself. So I don't know, it is certainly interesting. Let's rip it open. So, you got uh, several pieces here. This is the exclusive mask there, and we'll take a look at that. And then you have this uh, triangular poster that will um, extend out and become kind of a hexagon shape. So that is interesting. Um, you also have a little instruction booklet, it seems like, or maybe it's not a booklet, it's actually just a, a pamphlet, a little fold-out thing, that tells you how to put the pedestal together, and tells you to put it on this poster, once all is said and done, to look all nice. You're gonna need a lot of room for that, though, um, so we'll see how that goes. Here is the little poster itself. There you go. That looks pretty cool. You have, you know, the regions of Okoto represented there. Um, it's inherently very bent here, very creased, so it might be very difficult to actually display it like this unless you flatten it down with books or something like that. Um, on the back here you have the Mask of Creation, and uh, I think that's the eyes of, of Skull Grinder there in the background, um, although it could be trying to represent uh, Makuta. I don't know. Anyway, there is that. Looks pretty Pretty cool. Um, this would be a nightmare to frame. And again, I'll talk about my frustrations with the uh, Hero Pack poster at the end of this video. But uh, as far as it, it goes, it looks like it could be a pretty cool display if you had room for it. The problem being, yeah, you need a fairly big shelf to put something up like this up there. Um, but yeah, we'll take a look at it once we have the pedestal uh, built. We'll take a look at it again, at least. How do I fold this up? Like that, probably. There you go. Okay, so let's open up these pieces and actually take a look at the mask you're going to get here. Um, let 
make sure there aren't any pieces stuck in the corners. There you go. All right. So here is the golden skull mask here. Um, looks pretty good. It's the same gold as, you know, all of your, uh, your standard masks here. But what's kind of cool about this is uh, in the Summer Wave, you know, we got uh, a gunmetal mask. We also got a silver mask with grinder. And now we have a golden one. So we kind of have all three of the metallic colors. So that's pretty cool. Um, and, and that's that. There isn't really too much special about that outside of the fact that it's the same mask we've already got. Just in a new color. Um, it's nothing completely new, but then again, the mask from the Hero Pack wasn't anything completely new either. Still looks pretty cool. Anyway, this this is the main reason I wanted this, and this is the main reason I got uh, multiples of this set. Um, very cool, very shiny and holographic. I actually was not expecting that. Um, then you have the top sections here, which are exactly the same. I actually dabbled in trying to make uh, paper craft replicas of the, uh, the display pedestals they had at New York Comic Con, um, and that was a disaster. That's when I learned I was terrible terrible at paper craft. Um, but let's see how this thing goes together. So, number one would probably be where we start. This actually has uh, quite a few more pieces than the hero pack. So, um, that's good, I suppose. Uh, it offers a little bit more of a build to this let's build. That goes on like that. Moving on to step four. Um, I think we fold these down. Um, this is actually two pieces of cardboard. It seems like it's glued together. And that bends like that. Ooh, this is actually really nice. It's very thick, very sturdy. So that's good. I really like that. Um, and then you have this, which bends into a hexagonal shape here. This is very nicely put together. So it's either like that or, hmm, let's see. It's actually supposed to go like this in the instructions. Um, I think it goes like this. Let me just make sure that's uh, solid and together. Looks okay. There, there it is from the inside. Um, and then these bend down here, I believe. Just don't want to ruin this or rip any of the, the flaps because that would not be very good. <laughs> Ah, don't know if you heard that. There's a car beeping outside. But anyway, so there you go. There's that. This 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 doesn't seem like it. Well, maybe it'll maybe it'll line up better once I uh, once I put on the top and bottom. So do that there. I guess the the one uh, disappointment visually is that it just has the Lego logo right there. Um, I would have preferred it without that. I'm fine with it saying Bionicle, but just the fact it's Lego Bionicle. I guess, you know, that's accurate, but <laughs> uh, I don't know. Kind of throws off the visual aesthetic overall. But um, okay, so this kind of goes on there. That goes there. And this lines up here. Is this, is this good? Is this working? Yeah. Okay, and then same thing on the bottom, although I do kind of want to make sure that the Bionicle logos line up. On either side, like that. And... There you go. There is, there's the pedestal. 
Um, this does not seem very solid. Um, and there's a piece inside there, so if you accidentally pull this out, uh, you have to kind of open it up and uh, <laughs> and uh, try and fix it. Um, and you could risk ripping something. So I'm not sure I like that. You know, both of these pieces have a hole, so it could go either way if you wanted it to. But yeah, there is the pedestal. And then um, another thing about this set is, of course, it, it comes with the, the pieces similar to the pedestal that came in the Mask Maker vs. Skullgrinder set um, to hold the mask, so that if you bought multiples of these, you could have multiples of these pedestals and multiple uh, mask holding stands for all of the masks that are without them, which is most of them, considering uh, Mask Maker vs. Skullgrinder is the only set that came with any kind of stand for the mask itself. All right, so there's that. Um, you don't get any extra pieces, and you don't get an extra uh, little pin to put in there to hold the mask on better. Um, so you are kind of just left with this, unless you squeeze these sections apart. So let me do that just for right now. I do plan on putting a pin in there so that it's uh, more tightly secured, but let's turn this around so it's facing the Bionicle logo. And there you go. There you have your little... Uh, your little golden skull grinder mask with the cardboard pedestal. And this is actually very solid and looks really, really good. I really like that. Maybe I should have, um, maybe I should have made sure that this was towards the back rather than towards the front. I might reassemble that here, um, later. But, uh, but yeah, as far as, you know, it, it looks here, I'm very, very happy with this. So, um, after all that is said and done, that took a little longer than expected, but you're supposed to take this, flatten it down somehow, uh, put it on the ground, and then kind of place this in the middle. Let me uh, try and get a little bit more room here so that I can pan down ever so slightly. And then, you see you have, have the golden masks for each of the regions there. I guess the idea is to do this, and then place each of the golden masks uh, that you have in those regions. So, you know, Mask of Water back here, you can't really see that. Uh, mask of Earth back here, again, can't really see that. Uh, mask of Jungle. Mask of Stone. And mask of ice. Now, this would seemingly make more sense to me if you had the mask of creation there, um, and I will show the mask of creation on that uh, on that uh, pedestal here um, later, in a little bit later in the video here, but um, before I do that, I do want to uh, go ahead and grab my skull villains and uh, talk about an idea I had um, involving this mask. So uh, I'll be right back. First things first, here is Kolta the Skull Grinder wearing the gold version of his own mask. And it looks okay. It's not 100% fitting, but all things considered, I think it looks pretty good with the bronzy color already on his chest plate, and it's fairly at home with his warm color scheme. Gold is a pretty warm color, so it fits in line with his trans-orange fiery colors, in a similar way where I think Tahu looks the best out of the Toa wearing his golden mask. That said and done, I had a concept, an idea for ranking the Skull villains based on the mask that they wore. So allow me to bring in Skull Basher and Skull Slicer. As you can see, they are not wearing their normal masks. Skull Warrior and Skull Scorpio, being the lower-ranked members of the army, mass-built clones used as foot soldiers, they wear the lower-ranked mold of mask, the Bull Skull Mask in silver here. It's not great, doesn't look perfect, and Bull Skull Mask doesn't really fit, seeing as the Bull guy isn't wearing the mask anymore, but... Keep with me here, it's just a concept after all. 
don't take it too seriously. Then, the higher ranking officers in the army wear a different mold of mask. Their rank is translated through the color of mask that they wear. So, the second lieutenant, Skull Slicer, wears a silver version of this mask. The first lieutenant, Skull Basher, wears the gunmetal version of this mask. And finally, the head honcho, the general, the leader of the Skull Army, wears the most regal gold version of this mask. Again, I don't take this concept too seriously. I'm not even going to display my figures on my shelf like this, but it's an idea. You can do whatever you like with it. And then, of course, there is the reason I bought so many of these packs in the first place, and that is to display my G2 legendary masks. The Mask of Control, the Mask of Creation, and the eventual Mask of Ultimate Power. This is sort of a stand-in, as I assume that'll come out sometime in 2017. Now, having built several of these pedestals, I did learn a few things. First of all, I did put this seam here towards the back so it isn't visible from the front. You'll notice that this flap has a couple little grooves here, and you can push that in all the way so that it locks like the top section locks into the walls. However, I don't really advise that because doing that means this wall is a little bit shorter than all of the other walls, and it causes little gaps up here and down here. It stays together fairly well without locking that in place, so it's not really a problem. Also, be very careful about these little flaps. They're there to sort of represent little sections that come out of the top on the display pedestals they had for uh, Comic-Con, and it's... It's a little unnecessary, I feel. They could have just made it a hexagon shape and, and uh, been done with it. One of these was actually a little bit bent in the package. So, again, just be sort of careful. But otherwise, I am very, very happy with these. They're nice and shiny, and they, uh, they are much more solid than I expected them to be. Now... The reason I bought five of these instead of just three is, in the eventuality, they make a Mask of Time in the toy line for G2. I will have a fourth to display that, and then a fifth to keep in the package sealed for collector purposes, like I did with the Hero Pack. Speaking of which, this video has been pretty rambly up until now, why stop there? Let's go off the deep end and ramble about some problems that I have in hindsight with the Hero Pack. I haven't had a chance to talk about this since that Hero Pack video, so here goes. I did want to sort of compare the Hero Pack to this new Villain Pack anyway. So, yeah, here they are. I think this is just a much better pack. If nothing else, it's much more useful. I think the mask itself is a little bit more versatile. These d display pedestals are very, very cool and very, very useful. The poster is kind of a one-off display piece that you need a lot of room for, so that's kind of the most uh, lame thing in this set, but otherwise, it's very, very cool, and I can definitely recommend getting multiples. I can't really say the same for the Hero Pack. I mean, the mask is kind of cool, but you just get another spider, and if you got all of the Winter Wave 2015 sets, each one of them pretty much came with a Skull Spider anyway. You got these stickers that are kind of cool, but I'm never going to use them. You got this little booklet that had story information that was hilariously vague. And then you have this poster with the Island of Okoto and the Golden Masks on them. On it, rather. That is very cool. That is the coolest part about this pack for me. So cool that I wanted to frame it. Now, I had problems with that. To preface this, I recently did a Let's Build for a Nexo Knights polybag. It came with a poster, and the poster in this is the exact same size as the poster in the Hero Pack. And it is stupid. The size of this poster is so obscure. I think it's like 
11 and a half by 16 and a half, or like 11 and three fourths by 16 and a quarter, something really, really dumb. And the closest poster frame size to that is 11 by 17, which the poster doesn't quite fit in because it's either too long or, or too short in one way or another. So, if you saw my hero pack let's build, I intended on only opening a single one of the four I had gotten. That did not go as planned because I tried cutting the edge of the poster so that it would fit in a standard size poster frame that would look nice up on my wall. I cut it very precisely, I measured it exactly, and it worked pretty well. But just because of the way it's packaged, there's these very tight creases along the poster, and I wanted to try flattening things out. So I put a sheet over top of it and tried ironing it flat. The paper is not the same quality as like a standard movie poster I find. It's a little bit different. The ink isn't as high quality, so I actually ended up singeing the ink. Not recommended. Uh, that was stupid. I will never do anything like that again. The second poster, the second hero pack I opened just so I could get the poster out of it, I ended up cutting wrong. Um, I made a uh, improper measurement and kind of ruined the whole thing. And third time was the charm. I opened it up. To flatten it out, I actually used very heavy books instead of an iron, and I cut it just right, fit it in the poster. It wasn't perfect, but it worked well enough, and the poster ends up looking pretty good. But why did they have to make these posters such a stupid size? I mean, thankfully, I still have a sealed hero pack for my collection, one left, but the sizing of these posters is just stupid on Lego's part. Why not just make them 11 by 17? Because that's a standard size. That's a size they make poster frames for. <sighs> the silly part is that I have a Lego magazine from, I think, 2000, and it has a poster of Mata Nui in it. I took the staple out, I took that poster out, framed it, it is exactly 11 by 17. And it isn't really even meant to be a poster. It's meant to be a two-page insert in a magazine, and even it is 11 by 17. But the thing that is actually meant to be a displayed poster is not a standard size. Ridiculous. Anyway, I just had that on my chest for a while. I wanted to rant about it, and as I said earlier, I haven't had a chance to because um, I haven't made any relevant videos since I made that Hero Pack video. But since the Villain Pack is sort of relevant, I decided to uh, tag this on the end, uh, the tail end of the, uh, the Villain Pack Let's Build. Anyway, this has gone on for long enough. Long story short, I think this is a super cool pack. I really, really like these pedestals, and I can recommend buying multiples of them if that's something you're interested in. Again, they're a little bit spendy to ship cross-country on, on BrickLink. Uh, I got these for about $7 each, not including shipping. They were somewhere around 9 I think, for each one. Um, once all was said and done with shipping expenses included, kind of spendy, but if that's something that is worth it to you, it is definitely something I can recommend. So, that is about it, guys, and this is IX Roll at IX, signing off.